Senator Richard Blumenthal, Democratic Senator from the state of Connecticut, also Senator-elect Congressman Chris Murphy, also here with us this morning. And Senator Blumenthal, you have also spent most of the last 40 hours right here. I've spent a good part of the last two days here in this community, and I must, first of all, add my thanks to the governor for his strength and determination, but also to the community, which has really come together and demonstrated a kind of fiber and faith that is remarkable. I've spent time in this community before and always been impressed by the real links and bonds between people. You know, the ambulance and fire department are largely volunteer, so that many of the heroic stories here are about volunteers coming forward and trying to deal with the searing, almost unbearable pain that so many feel knowing the families, knowing the victims, and of course, as a parent myself, four children, uh, I can really have some sense of what they are going through. And Congressman, this is this is in your district. You've been representing this for many uh, years, and I've seen it just in the last couple of days. Um, this is a community that is tightly tied together. Talking to Monsignor Weiss uh, yesterday, he had baptized many of the children in that school. You want to talk about the quintessential small New England town? It's new town. There's a. Labor Day Parade that's the pride of this community that runs through Main Street every year and every single school and community group um, plans the entire year to be part of that celebration of America. It's a small town, a very tightly knit town, a town that probably grieves a little bit deeper because this incident, um, because everyone that was taken was within a few square miles of each other, will be more difficult, but a, a town that can rebuild because its faith is so strong and because its ties to each other are so strong. There's been miracles that have happened every day since uh, this tragedy hit, and it points the way towards the way that Newtown, um, because of its close-knit nature, can heal. The schools here are going to be closed tomorrow. What is the step-by-step -step process going forward after that? Well, I think that's going to be a consultation with uh, the first select woman and the Board of Education. Um, I think it's important for um, students and for faculty to be able to process this together. Uh, and so I think there is a need for um, this community to get back to some semblance of a schedule. Um, but each individual faculty member and each individual student and family is going to take their, their own time. And so uh, I think we are still 48 hours after this incident just trying to figure out how to think about it, never mind how to actually go by the step-by-step -step process of grieving and reconstructing this community. It's going to take a while. How to think about it and how to talk about it. And Senator, I know that you, uh, as we move, move on, want to begin a conversation in the Senate about how the country can come together to, to address this violence. You know, I come to this issue with a background of almost 30 years in law enforcement, both criminal Attorney General. and civil, as a United States attorney, the chief federal prosecutor, and then... 20 years as Attorney General. And I'm hearing from the community, as well as my colleagues in law enforcement, we need to do something. And I'm hearing from my colleagues in the Senate around the country, some in states like Wisconsin and Colorado, where there have been similar horrific, horrible tragedies, maybe not involving children with this kind of uh, uncomprehensible kind of circumstance. But we need to do something at the very least, perhaps about the high capacity magazines that were used in this crime. But of course, the investigation here is continuing and we'll lear learn more. And out of respect to the families and their grief, at this point, I'm not going to be more specific about that conversation. But certainly, this horrible episode and incident and crime by this deranged person possessed by demons, as you have put it, will spur and transform, I think, the national conversation. And I intend to talk about it on the floor of the United States Senate, perhaps as early as this week. Congressman, do you think this can be a tipping point? Well, I think um, the tipping point should have happened a long time ago, um, frankly. And as I think eager as people are going to be to find some simple solution from a policy standpoint, um, we have to acknowledge um, that there is no simple solution, that yes, there needs to be a conversation about gun control, but also about um, the way we treat mental illness, also about the culture of violence in this country, which may have contributed to the way in which this very disturbed young man thought. Um, this is going to be a very complicated process. 
of asking why, but we also have to admit that it's going to be a very complicated process of figuring out what to do from here. We need to talk about it, though. The, the time for sort of saying that um, we can't talk about the policy implications of tragedies like this is over. And for us here in Connecticut, well, we're going to grieve and make sure the families have everything they need. Um, we're going to be on the floor of the Senate very soon talking about where we go from here. And we are all grieving with you today. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, Governor, as well. And when we come back, more coverage of the tragedy at this elementary school, Sandy Hook. How can we make our schools more secure, keep our kids safe? We'll be back with more of this special edition of This Week.